Hello and welcome to NetsmithDesign.com. Today is June 24th, 2009, and this is our second webcast. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about W3C validation and compliance with the standards set by that organization and why it's important to your website and its coding. Here at Netsmith Design, we make every effort to make sure that each page that we program is compliant to the World Wide Web Consortium's set of standards. Some of you out there might be wondering what exactly is the World Wide Web Consortium, and so I'm going to go ahead and show you by visiting their website. And you can reach them by going to www.w3.org. And you'll notice that they have a lot of cool little resources here. Uh, everything from activities, uh, technical reports, uh, accessibility, uh, HTML. Uh, all of these things over here are basically uh, areas where you can go into uh, that will give you uh, what standards uh, apply to the respective links as far as the W3C is concerned. And I would note that the W3C is actually headed by the gentleman who invented the internet, uh, Tim Berners-Lee. So what these guys have to say is uh, it, it's pretty important. So we're going to take a look at their validator because this is what a lot of people get hung up on when you know their site isn't being searched properly or it's not being spidered properly by Google or Yahoo and they're wondering why. Let's take a look at Netsmith Design's homepage. Now you'll notice it's pretty simple as far as layout is concerned, and we have some content here, uh, as well as an image and a header and so on. But this isn't exactly what spiders see when they come crawling your website. What they actually see is the source code. And that's what we're looking at right here. Let me shrink this down a little so we can see. There we go. So when Google comes visiting your site, the spider for content, it's going to go ahead and see this. And it's all the HTML, or rather XHTML, that's present that generates what you see here. Now, in order for the spiders to successfully grab all the content and index it with ease, it needs a certain format or to recognize the format that you're using in the certain document that you have created and are asking it to spider. So in this case, you'll notice that there's a doc type declaration at the very top. Now, technically, all ex excuse me, all HTML documents ought to be declared uh, as far as what type they are before the HTML begins. So this way, the spiders can go ahead and know, or the W3C validator can know, exactly what type of document it's looking at. So, here we know that this document is programmed to the XHTML 1.0 strict standards as are all of our pages at netsmithdesign.com. And what that means is that XHTML 1.0 strict is what we're using to go ahead and make sure that all of our code is crisp, clean, and that it's easily read by search engines, Google, Yahoo, and MSN, so that we can get indexed and we can go ahead and have more exposure out there just by using proper structure from a code perspective. Now, let's close the source code and let's get back to the actual validation or the process of validating. So at the w3.org's website we can go ahead and access their validation area and I'm actually going to go ahead there we go and there's a link right there for the W3C validator. It'll just take a moment to load. And you can access this by going to validator.w3.org. And it'll ask you to go ahead and either input a URI, validate by file upload, or validate by direct input. Most times you can just plug in a URI. Uh, and it'll go ahead and take that with no problem and get right back to you with the results. And that was, that's what was generated previously, but just so that you guys know that I'm not uh, fudging any results here, I'll go ahead and put it in our website's URL, check it against the validator. It'll take a moment to go ahead and spider the document and to go through 
all of the different tags and here we are. The document was successfully checked as a XHTML 1.0 strict. In short, that means that all the standards laid out by the W3C have been met by this document as far as XHTML 1.0 strict goes. That's one of the tougher standards to go ahead and meet. Uh, not a lot of program, well, I shouldn't say not a lot, but a good number of programs programmers would prefer to work in a, an XHTML transitional because it gives them a little bit more license to go ahead and use different tags or not necessarily deprecated uh, elements and tags, but you know elements that XHTML 1.0 strict doesn't allow to be used because of the move towards separating content from styling. Uh, so, and for a host of other reasons, but those are the, that's the main one. So, you'll notice also that they'll give us icons that we can use to throw on our website to say that we've gone ahead and passed their validator and the document checks and it's programmed to, well, one of the highest of standards for that language. You can also go ahead and validate CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheet. And there you go again. And that's MythDesign.com's homepage. No errors are found. Now some of you might be wondering, well, I have a website and I'm going to go ahead and check to see if it passes W3C validation. And let's check out Google. Okay, so here we go. Google has 48 errors and two warnings. And yet, if we check their page, there doesn't seem to be any errors. Our browser isn't showing anything crazy. You know, the Google image isn't you know left justified or anything like that. So it appears very nicely. If we were to check it in a different browser, we'd notice the same thing that the page renders just fine. And so one might wonder, well, is more is validation necessary? And the short answer is no. Validation is not necessary or compliance, I should say, with the W3C standards is not necessary for your website to render uh, just as you'd like it to. However, as far as getting indexed and for good SEO and just for standards compliance uh, with the web in general, uh, W3C validation is highly recommended. There are no guarantees as far as whether or not your website is going to be indexed better or if your page rank is going to go higher. However, uh, having everything in order from a coding perspective makes it a heck of a lot easier for these engines to find you. It's also great for SEO just because they don't have to search too hard or run multiple spiders or scans to go ahead and get all your keywords. They know exactly where to find them. Also, from a coding perspective, if you decide that you'd like to go ahead and give your site a facelift or just to go ahead and implement new features, uh, rest assured that the next developer that you talk to won't have to go ahead and go through spaghetti code just to get to the necessary information. Okay, because it's programmed uh, and is standards compliant, any developer uh, who understands why it's important to go ahead and use that uh, compliance uh, based coding will know exactly where to find what he's looking for and will be able to make adjustments accordingly to your website. And those are some of the errors that Google generated when we went through the validation. But like I said, not the most important thing in the world. Uh, you know, the main thing here again is just to understand that W3C compliance is important because number one it'll it may help I should say with your page rank it also may help with getting your site index a lot quicker uh, it also may help with your SEO and finally and most importantly when it's time to go ahead and make edits to your website or to upgrade or to do some changes you've got a nice structured code base that anyone can go ahead and access and go ahead and program and develop from so I hope you enjoyed our webcast today. I'm sure we'll have a few more coming uh, shortly. And thank you for joining us here at netsmithdesign.com. If you have any questions, go ahead and hit our Contact Us page, and you can go ahead and uh, file them there or just ask us for a quote on any kind of site development or script installations or any kind of stuff like that. And uh, that's about it for today, guys. So thanks again, and have a good day.